Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to learn about web applications, networking connectivity. And within this network connectivity, when you created your application, web application, you will have it two things. One would be the inbound connectivity where you will be actually accessing the web application. So that's, we call it as an inbound. And the outbound connection, that's nothing but a from the web application. Let's say it has to go and communicate with another, maybe a virtual machine or maybe with the SQL server for communicating that's called outbound connectivity so these are the two things that uh, will be involved here so the first thing if you look at inbound connectivity it's going to be a single static IP which will be automatically assigned by Microsoft Azure when you create the web application and coming back to the connectivity also similar uh, but in this case it's not just a single IP it could be a multiple IP addresses and those are the IP addresses and based on that your web application might be built so you must have to allow the access to your SQL connections for example if you have in between any firewall rules you should make sure that you should be enabling uh, those uh, uh, IP addresses so that the connection can be established and it can work. So let's jump into the Azure portal and have a look on it what I'm talking. This is my previous application web application that we have created earlier and let's go to the properties of this web application. This is where we are talking about it. So when you create your web application in this case this web application you have your IP address which was created by Azure services automatically and you cannot change this and coming back to the uh, the things like we talked about the inbound and outbound so this is the IP address we can take it as the inbound which will be used for the uh, communication purpose and when we talk about the outbound uh, you see here you have multiple IP addresses this is IP different and this is one more IP this is one more like this multiple IP addresses are given the IP addresses and also there are additional outbound IP addresses also given so these all the IP addresses you must have to allow within your firewall or within your network to communicate with your SQL server or maybe other applications so that you should be able to access this web application or it can access to the SQL server or other networking uh, core components. Let's have a look on other concept within the networking so when you create your web application you can actually restrict uh, with the access restrictions can be applied. Let's say I don't want this my application should be open for everybody because when you create web application it's open for everyone right you don't want to do that or maybe you want to restrict based on IP addresses or maybe on a VNets or IP address range all that can be done uh, within the uh, configuration of your access restrictions apart from this you also have the configuring the web applications with the certificate like when you open web application any of the web application you can force them to redirect to HTTPS that's where you can configure as an inbound to the web applications but what if your applications also wants to communicate with some other application uh, securely over the SSL in that situation you would be using public certificates so there are two type of uh, things that we need to you know consider for the certificates one would be the inbound other one would be the outbound to another uh, resource within the Azure or maybe somewhere to access for the uh, in that situation you need to have the public certificates and also the private certificate for your web applications so let's jump into the Azure portal to have a look on these things so the first thing we will look at the access rules by going to the networking section of my web application and if I just go down completely I do have your access restrictions and by default I do have your allow action uh, if you see here and as soon as I create here an action of a, a rule this becomes as a DNA and my rule gets priority and also one of the rules I'm going to create the lower priority becomes as the higher uh, higher priority that means lower number becomes as the higher priority to take or to pass that rules that's how you can configure and also you have here two types of things one would be the for your directly for your web application other one would would, would be for your management managing of your web application so that's called SCM and other one would be the just a web application let's see I uh, will try to configure a rule for web application that's inbound so I'll just click on add rule and this would gives me a name to enter very similar to your NSGs or your firewall rules all you have to do is you have to fulfill all these things like a name priority description and IP address all that I have actually filled here allow 
only from vnet as a name and i'm taking action as lo and the priority is 100 i'm giving a simple description here and type you have your ip version 4 as well as the 6 and also you have a virtual network let's see uh, you want to configure for only specific public ip only to be allowed you can do that or you want to block you can do that or in my case i'm going to actually configure for my vnet uh, since i have my uh, subscription that has already a vnet got created so i can choose that vnet so what happens is within this specific vnet only the access will be granted and to apply this rule it might take anywhere from 5 minutes to 15 minutes of the time so i'll just click on add rule that's going to actually allow add as soon as it becomes as a allow this rule the default rule becomes as dini you see here this has become as a dini the rule and the first priority is the 100 and earlier the number was one here and this has a long lengthy number now so the lower priority uh, lower priority number takes the higher priority for you let's say if i uh, put another rule to block it or maybe allow for some other ip address with the ip with the 99 priority that becomes as a higher and that after pausing that only it will check for other rules that's how it's going to work let's jump into the azure uh, with a virtual machine that we have so if you look at here within the virtual machine i have a vnet called uh, here web apps demo hyphen vnet this is a vnet which we have associated with our web application so in this case this web application has configured with the networking option with the access rules of web application specific this is what it was configured for this uh, a vnet right so i just logged into that vm01 here uh, just to save the time and i'm just opening this so i'm able to browse this web page successfully without any issue but if i try to copy the same uh, url and try to open from my other machine maybe from directly from this my management machine i will be forbidden uh, the reason being uh, it has been uh, blocked the access uh, and this rule is getting applied so that's how it's going to work and uh, if you try to remove this rule it's going to definitely allow me to access uh, from anywhere and the rule has been taken out now if i try to access i might be able to access it after some time because it's just applied and it takes anyway from 5 to 15 minutes time let's try one more time as a quick refresh so it's now i'm able to access from outside also this is how it's going to work let's have a look on tls and ssl settings so within this uh, certificates if you have your own certificates you can actually bind so that your website will open with the https if you see here my website is not opening with https and it says that connection is uh, not secure the reason being i'm actually using the default uh, site uh, given certificate which is not a good uh, to use right so I need to actually use the my certificate so in case if I have a certificate I can simply uh, go ahead and upload here from the private key either directly from the app service certificate or upload a private certificate by buying from somewhere or if you have a certificate that is coming from key vault you can import that certificate and also anything if you are using app service managed certificate you can use it so in my case if i want really i can go ahead and upload the certificate but uh, since i don't have that certificate uh, maybe you know i cannot show you that but you can actually here upload the certificate and coming back to the uh, binding settings uh, within this binding you can actually bind with ssl as once we have actually imported here you can bind it with your custom domain in my case this is a custom domain and i can upload my pfs certificate once i have uploaded this pfs certificate i should be able to bind uh, with ssl that's where i can uh, get the option of ip based ssl or or sni based so when i get the uh, ip based if i choose here then it becomes as the complete uh, static ip address of my networking because if you remember on the properties you had a different ip every time it's going to actually change this virtual ip so this becomes as the uh, static ip if i choose the T, uh, tls or ssl type or a static public private ip and uh, in case if i choose as the sni that's nothing but my server name indication so that's going to be bind with the 
domain name so that uh, it's gonna actually work based on the domain instead of uh, binding with um, IP address you can also configure your web applications with the integration of virtual networks that you have for example in my vnet I do have a vnet which was configured for VMs right so I can configure that by pointing here or uh, as click on add vnet if my vnet in the same region I should be able to get it that specific vnet otherwise I will not be getting here as that specific vnet so in that situation I have to either create a new vnet in that isolated uh, network or a remote uh, web application uh, region and then from there to my other network i need to make a vpn gateway like a side-to-side -side vpn gateway kind of you know establishing uh, connectivity uh, should be established then i should be able to communicate or i should be able to make the connection as an integration of the virtual networks so in my case i can choose here my subnet so here the subnet is uh, needs to be created a dedicated subnet that's why it's not showing so i can create here subnet uh, with respect to that and uh, then it's gonna uh, enter that and then the integration would happen for this virtual machine and the last but not the least one would be the changing your web applications to uh, changing the service plan to isolation environment and let's say if you are looking for high scaling of your uh, environment completely too isolated then you need to create a high scale of the networking a plan and then you can move it so when you do that you can actually internally you can have your app services uh, can uh, communicate only with your required workloads or workloads with the help of uh, load balancer and from the worker load subnet to on-premises you can make a connection with site-to-site -side connection and uh, that's how you can you know work with the isolated to uh, workload and workload to on-premises you can make the connectivity I hope this lecture is useful for you thank you for watching this